Sebastian Seidel here, and welcome to Headline and Prophecy. We do this blog every Monday, and we do it to skirt or, or try and accommodate the censors and social media. If you'd like to receive raw content uh, that uh, is uh, not in the uh, view of the censors, we have a blog on Fridays called What I Really Think, and to receive that, you'll have to become a part of our, our ministry. Um, you can go to our website, watchersofthetruth.com, and sign up as a free member. We don't sell your data or give your data to anybody. We use it to email what I really think and notes for our Bible studies. Again, that's watchersoftruth.com, uh, and sign up for a free membership, and you'll receive that every, every Friday. Today I want to talk to you about a scripture in uh, Matthew chapter 24 uh, and verse 12. Uh, Jesus is asked three questions. Two of them are, what are the signs of your coming and the end of the age? Uh, although verse 12 says, uh, because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. We've looked at it before. Um, lawlessness has been a part of human society going back uh, to the beginning of time. However, in this particular scripture, it says that it's talking about the church. It's talking about God's people. Their love will grow cold because of what's going on in the culture. And I've taught on it from that standpoint. I've had some blogs on it from that standpoint that that Christianity is beginning to merge into the world. There's no difference between the, the church and the world. And not those anyway that, that are labeled Christians, those that would label themselves as a Christian but don't live the word of God. Um, they, uh, they're they becoming or looking more like the world. Today I wanna to look at it from a, uh, from a biblical standpoint regarding government, re regarding our government. Uh, when you look back in Exodus chapter 20, and you look through the Torah, Leviticus, uh, Numbers, and particularly Leviticus, uh, Numbers, and uh, um, we see that the, 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 the law was given to Moses. And the law was something that God gave him. We know the Ten Commandments. However, there were a lot more than Ten Commandments. There were uh, hundreds of commandments. They were broken up into three areas. There was the hygienic law. Uh, which basically said wash your hands, wash your feet. The Jews washed their feet before they went into their homes at night in their hands. They bathed on a regular basis. They were clean. Uh, they, they, there were certain hygienic things that, you know, take your waste outside of the city and things like that. Uh, and then we had shadow Christology, which was types and shadows of what Christ would do. So they, the, we, we all know the sacrificing of a, of a baby lamb uh, on Passover, and uh, the, but there were several other things that they would go through that would point to Christ. So we call that shadow Christology. And then the third was the social or civil law. This is how you live amongst yourselves, right? Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's goods or wife. And so the law was given, and with the law was also the consequence for breaking that law. And so not only did God give the law to Moses, but he gave the consequences, the, 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 the civil response to that. And so with an offense came a judgment. So what this did was it put the people in restraint. It restrained them from, um, from committing, uh, uh, we would call breaking the law or offenses, and uh, would be sent as well. And so without restraint, uh, more and more people would participate in sin. And, 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 and as they participate in sin, uh, lawlessness would abound, right? It would grow because there was no restraint. There was nothing holding them back. I always remember uh, when I was, uh, I was probably around 10 years old uh, during the Detroit riots back in, uh, I think it was 67, 68. Um, I remember my father was friends with a uh, uh, high official in the Detroit Police Department. And at the time the riots were going on, we had a governor, uh, George Romney, who wanted to run for president, and a, and a mayor of Detroit, uh, Kavanaugh, who wanted to become governor. And they had very strict rules on the police department on what they could do and couldn't do. And so Detroit was in riots for you know several weeks uh, until uh, they took the handcuffs off and they were able to get aggressive. But what we seen was, because there was such a flight out of Detroit of businesses, because they were being looted and ransacked, 
people that wouldn't normally uh, go in and, and steal were going into these stores and, and taking TVs and other things because nothing was being done about it. It perpetuated itself. And so when we look at our country, we look at what's going on, you know, particularly when you look at, at New York and, and San Francisco. San Francisco, California has a rule where you can go in and shoplift, I think it's up to $950 worth of merchandise and virtually nothing happens. I mean, you just, it's, it's, it's a low grade, very low grade misdemeanor. So there's no restraint. And, and uh, when you look at New York, the same thing, there is, they're releasing immediately, uh, releasing uh, folks that are caught, you know, hurting others, beating others, stealing. They're releasing them into the general population again, only to be arrested again. And so this perpetuates more lawlessness in our land. And the, you know what, what it's really doing is we're, you know, it's, it's creating a lack of respect for the police, for the courts, for the government itself. And as that begins to breed and spawn, what will happen is uh, either there'll be a, a, a revolt of some sort or citizens will begin to take matters in their own hands as they did back in, in the riots. And, uh, and what also happens is, is that citizens that are being most affected by this, and a lot of times it's in lower income areas, honest, good, decent people are just working, trying to get by, they end up moving into suburban areas to get their goods and services, but so does the, so do the villains, so do the criminals. They go, they don't just stay in areas, they begin to migrate to wherever they can get away with their crimes. And so unless something is done about this, because we've, we've lost law and order uh, because of what we've seen in the, in the uprising, when you look at George Floyd and his, his murder, it started uh, a, a whole slew of uprisings across the country. And regardless of, uh, regardless of what you think about that particular circumstance, honest, good, decent business people, uh, honest landlords and, and, and individuals that have invested their lives in either businesses or, or buildings or real estate are being affected by the lawlessness. And so what happens is, it, it drives those folks to leave those cities. Um, we're already seeing some of the chains close early. We're seeing them leave certain areas and that hurts that community. Uh, but, but it is a sign uh, that things are breaking down. And, and, and so we, we, need to, uh, we need to pray, but we also need to elect officials that will enforce the laws. Otherwise, this is gonna come to every neighborhood in the country. Uh, because if there's no restraint and there's no prison time and there's no downside uh, to breaking the law, um, you'll see this increase. Uh, you'll see people that are on the margins who, who might not have done this uh, begin to do crimes and that breeds lawlessness and violence. And so um, again, God laid this out. God gave us the commandments, right? And most nations on the face of the earth are using that process. I mean, whether you're in communist China or here in the US, the system's built on there's laws and there's consequences. There's offenses and disobedience and there's consequences. And if you, if you really look at it, the first thing that, that Satan did was breed lawlessness in the first couple. Because the first thing he said was God gave uh, Adam uh, and Eve through Adam the commandment uh, to not eat of a certain tree. And the first thing Satan did was there's no consequence. You shall not surely die. There's no consequence to your actions. So lawlessness is his game, it's not God's game. God's game is uh, law and order and decency. And so uh, to this, today's blog, again, let me encourage you, share this with others on social media. We shouldn't get censored for this one, hopefully not. Uh, but share this on social media with your friends and family. But really, I, uh, join us at, at watchersoftruth.com. That's watchersoftruth.com and become a free member. And you get access not only to what I really think, but but several curriculums, videos, workbooks, and all of that is free uh, for you. Anyway, God bless you, and I'll see you next Monday.